Okay, so this should be a pretty quick video on how to how to download and install in WinMM and have it set up for the CQ uh, WPX single sideband contest this weekend. The first step is to download in WinMM, and you go to downloads full install, and this is going to be in WinMM Logger Plus. That's like the normal, the new thing. So full install. Click here to install it. Easy so far. Uh, click there to install and download. Save once that installs. Double click the installer. Give it a minute. The user account control thing comes up and says, you know, are you sure you want to do this? And click yes. And then just do all the defaults unless you want to change the plate wherever you want to put it. It gets it all set up and ready to go, and it installs. Next. And then it wants you to reboot your computer, but I don't do that, but you probably should. It opens up this uh, revision history. You can close that. Now I'm going to open it up by going to Start Menu in 1MM. can't see this. It's on the wrong screen. And it'll open up in 1MM. I uh, already had this installed earlier. And, and yours might look like this, or it might not. Like I, I have some leftover stuff, but it ideally will just have this screen. And it said there uh, it had a, it was it was an older version. So the first thing you want to do is probably update it. And you do that by going to Help and Revision History and Latest Update Download. It kind of does it automatically. I don't know why it, why it did that. Let's get rid of that. It'll download, it'll exit, it'll install. Another one of these pops up, for yes. Same kind of thing yet again, because the what's on the on the actual website isn't the like newest version. Our release, blah, 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 forwarded through the anonymous configuration, live cluster rating. So there's some new stuff. And if you want to opt into this, you can and click cancel if you don't want to do any anonymous uh, stuff. So what you want to do once and when it is loaded, go to config and change your station data. Here's where you put in your call sign. You don't have to put any anything, the name, address, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I would still do that anyway because when you develop, uh, when you actually are, you you submit your log, it will have kind of your e information if they need to contact you. Uh, so I put my email address down there. You do want to put in like your CQ zone and ITU zone and like generally where you are. I think my IT zone, ITU zone is seven. This sets up some things in the background to make sure it, it knows that you're in the United States. And you can also put that there. And then you want to go to file uh, new, you can create a new database, but there's already one created. It's called HAM, and it's an S3DB. I forget what kind of, um, I guess SQL. Click New Login Database, and this is pretty straightforward. You just select the log type, but they use kind of cryptic, uh, I got a new box, cryptic, um, you know, shortening. So this is CQ, WPX, SSB, and then everything is set up for that. Your start date, um, you shouldn't have to change this because it'll know what the start date of that contest is. But if you need to, you can do that here. Uh, especially if you start late, you probably want to put like exactly when you started, but not necessary because the log already kind of takes care of that. All right. And then here's where you put in your, your category, your operator category. If you're single op, you're probably single op. If you're, if you want to do a single band, you can pick like a single band, but most people do all. Power and this is this is all in the rules. Most people are going to be low power if you're doing 100 watts, and 1500 watts would be high power. I think there's, I think you know, high power might be 600 or more watts. I, I forget. You have to look up the rules and just know, you know, how wh how you're entering. So I'll be like low because I'm 100 watts. Single sideband. That's literally the contest. Overlay is something you want if you want to be uh, placed into a, a subcategory. Uh, classic is like using homebrew. Hi, Justin. Uh, or not homebrew, using old radios. TB stands for tri-bander, um, dash wires, which kind of tells the, puts you in a category of using um, um, basic equipment rather than like big beams and stuff. 
Uh, novice tech, I think that's if you're a technician, but that won't apply. Over 50 if you're over 50 years old. And the rookie is if you haven't contested before or in the last, if this is like your f first three years of contesting, but th these are in the rules. So you can pick one or not. Station is probably fixed if you're at home. Uh, and assisted is whether or not you're using the DX cluster. And that is the, um, like for example, if I pull it up on a browser, DX Summit. If you are using Telnet or anything that tells you where people are where and what their frequencies are, this is getting assistance. And so if you do do that, you want to put assisted. If you don't do that and you won't do that for the whole thing, you can put non-assisted. Transmitter, how many transmitters you're operating? Most people are using one, but uh, multi-stations will use two or more. Um, and then exchange is already set up. And then operators, if you have more than one operator, then I think in the single sideman, the, the exchange is this number and that's pound sign. Um, so it should have it set up. You can click show rules and it'll, it'll automatically open up the, you know, the rules for it. CQ, WPX, single sideman. So yeah. And then you hit okay. And that's all you need to do. So now you start writing down calls. So in zero AX, uh, copy your number one and I send you, uh, he's my number 10. Uh, okay, N zero A Q L. All right, you're my number. Your number two is your number is two. What's my number? What's six? Okay, W four A Q L. Your number is three. What is my number? Oh, uh, it's uh, twenty five. Okay. All right. Now the contest is done. I have three stations in the log. You can put your if you go to window, click log. You can see your log in in uh, in real time, and this is especially helpful to have up. Uh, because if you screw it up and, you know, this guy was actually in two AQL, you can, you know, do that, uh, double click it, retype whatever the, the issue was, and then hit enter, just like with a number two, or number as well. Um, and as you can see, it automatically scores your, um, this is your score, and this is like a multiplier. I'm getting like a big error. And you can see your score using score summary. Pull it up over here. So I have nine points if i click rescore it updates in, in here i don't know why it's different but uh this this shows your score at any one time and then it's just a matter of playing around with the uh, with the window like there's a gray line map that shows you where the uh oh uh, it's downloading a new map it won't let me scroll it because it's loading there it is shows you where the sun is and where the darkness is if you want to use gray line propagation to your advantage um info shows your QSO rate. So if you're making a lot of QSOs, see, I made those three QSOs and it gave me an hour, a rate of 126 per hour. And it, little tooltips will tell you like what they all mean. Um, Telnet, this is if you're using um, assistance, like like the DX cluster, you will want to find a, um, a cluster that works. I think they, they created these, these rating things VE7CC works really well. So if you do that, connect to VE7CC, it should open up and you get information. You type in your call. And then this sets up the, the assistance. And I'm going to say show DX to get a bunch of call signs. That's SH slash DX. Now I can kind of minimize that. That's like the, the console window for Telnet. And that feeds this thing, which is the, uh, oh, what is it? Band map. Um, which shows you all of the stations that are being spotted. Um, and so I'm on 160 meters, so there's not many. If I change to 14,250, and you can do that right from this right from this thing. And there's lots of little things like this, but um, uh, if, you, if you don't have cat control, you don't necessarily need to keep your frequency up to date. You just need to keep the band up to date. But it would be nice if you, you had cat control and all that stuff, but I won't get into that just to be simple. Um, but yeah, you can notice if I click this station, it'll want to automatically, it'll automatically change my frequency. I can hit tab or I can hit space bar. <laughs> and then, um, he's not actually contesting, but say, you know, if, if you do work him and he's like number 50, then boom, work at him. Click this guy, space bar. And you have to verify, obviously, if that's the real person back there. Um, 74. Um, and then also if you're if you say if you're running and let me go to like 14 250 and you're calling CQ you want to click the run button that puts a little marker on the band map 
Now, you don't need Telnet to have the band map because the band map will tell you, let's say, if I'm running Search and Pounce and I'm on 14, 2, 2, 5. Uh, four, let me try 14, 2, 2, 3, 5. And then I hear a station like K3LR, but I've already worked him. Let me pretend that I've already worked him. I'm hitting too many buttons. Ignore all that. Um, and then sometime later, I go to 14.3.1.2, and uh, I type K3LR, and he's there too. It'll say dupe, and I can move off of that frequency. And if I had an actual VFO, I could move off that frequency. Let me see if this works. Yeah, and it'll kind of show, there he is. Like, that's where I found him. That grayed out means he's a dupe. Um, and anything that's in red is a multiplier. Anything that's in blue is uh, not a multiplier. So if I work um, a Whiskey 7 uh, Golf Bravo, notice this Whiskey 7 Hotel X-Ray. It's red right now, but if I work a Whiskey 7, it turns blue because in what, uh, the WPX contest, the, the multiplier is the prefix. And so everyone who has a unique prefix, they, uh, they get that, that's a multiplier, so they get a red color. But you can still work him to get points. Right. Okay, so you've contested, you're done, you're ready to submit the log. To do that, you go to tools, you want to rescore and make sure that, you know, your score looks right. I got 70 points and made eight QSOs with seven multipliers. Um, now you go to generate Cabrillo file and it will generate, you just click, you know, ensure that everything's right and it'll create the log. You can click edit to see it. And this is what you actually submit to um, the, the log, logging people. I would fill in your name, address, city, and everything that's empty in here that you may or may not have filled in in the config state changer station data, like over here, just to make sure that if they need to contact you, if you really did work CE3JBD or not. So that was a pretty quick one through. It is a kind of crash course, but if you have any questions, let me know and I can kind of run through anything in, in more advanced stuff like, you know, um, cat control, ports, win key, that sort of thing. Um, then, you know, that's even, that's, that it goes really deep. There are a lot of features and that's why people are sometimes scared of N1MM to, you know, try to look and, look and are looking for something more simple. But at the end of the day, it's, it's relatively straightforward to get set up from a bare minimum and it, and it can go so much further than, than just that too especially if you have a rig connected and rotators and all that stuff. Um, it's a great piece of software and it's free. So thanks for watching in 73.